The 36th staging of the World Speedway Championship final, but the first in West Germany, where the crowd tend to treat Speedway as an excuse for carnival. But this one, it must be said, had all the atmosphere and glamour of a Hicktown cattle show. In the pits, before the start, the atmosphere, understandably, was tense. But more than the 16 finalists from eight different nations, one man was attracting a lot of attention. The reigning world champion, now retired, Bruce Pennell, joining our ITV commentary team. Well, it's good you're here with us uh, today, but you had a bit of a job getting here, and you forgot your passport. What's been happening? Boy, I feel like a rookie traveler. I did. I, well, actually, I everything was in such a hustle bustle. I was only here for a few hours, and then I took back off, and I left my passport in, in Birmingham, and I kind of had to get in here hiding under the trunk in the boot of the car. You're in the boot of Peter Adams' car, so, I mean, what yeah. happened? You went through I think that's three what, checkpoints. I was more nervous then than I had been when I was racing, so it was pretty tough. <laughs> and what about the trophy itself? Uh, they've been chasing you around the world to get it back, the yeah, organizers. I don't want to give it back. I want to keep that darn thing. Uh, and it's been in my house for two years. It kind of looks really nice on my mantelpiece, and I even polished it myself to get it back here, and it's, that's kind of hard, too, giving the trophy back. The riders line up for the anxious moments of machine scrutineering when details regarding the regulation on the carburetors and silencers are checked under the eagle eye of the German officials. Couldn't get this one through scrutineering, boys, but uh, it'll do as a spare, I think. <laughs> What's it, what's it like at this time of the day, Kenny, for World Fun? Well, I don't know, you know, pretty good, really. I've uh, been playing with my baby this morning and having a few laughs and jokes with my dad and that, and uh, just hope we can laugh afterwards. What's the track like? <laughs> totally different to what it was for the practice yesterday. Um, it was pretty slick for the, for the practice, and they've obviously piled a load of dirt on today, so I would say it's in the hope that they can bring Egon Muller through for a win. A lot of pressure on you from the German supporters today, though, surely? Yeah, the trouble is, uh, you know, they think I should be world champion after this meeting, but it is impossible. Without so much uh, experience like any anybody has to write in the British League, that's the problem. It's very, very open, this one. Yeah, it sure is. Anything can happen. We'll soon find out. <laughs> what does the track look like? The track looks very, very good. Uh, the stadium looks excellent. I think the wind right now has kind of dried out the surface a little bit, which has made it a little powdery. It does have a bit of grip on it. They even may have to water it. They've had a little rain last night. The track looks beautiful, though. Heat number one, that we watch from Michael Lee on the outside, one of England's main hopes. And he's made a flyer from the start. Dennis Segalos gets to the corner with him on the inside in red. But there's a fabulous picture of Michael Lee going very quickly indeed, stretching away in heat one. And obviously, Mike the bike looks well set up here today. Michael, what a good start that was. You gave it superbly. Yeah, I thought I was going to miss it. You know, I kind of half dropped the clutch. And then as the tapes went, I wasn't sure whether they were going to go. And, uh, well, I got there, only just by the skin of my teeth, so I tell you, it was bloody close. Heat two with Ollie Olsen in the blue helmet colour on the inside, Billy Sanders. Olsen, the oldest man in the final, gets a nudge going up to the corner. Sanders is in front, and the Australian, who we felt would be a dark horse with his experience of riding big tracks like this one, he too looks pretty sharp here in Germany. And heat three coming up with Kenny Carter, perhaps England's main hope coming into the action, but in his first race he faces a dangerous West German Egon Muller on home soil. Muller on the outside, Carter on the inside of red, then heat three, and what a start from Egon Muller in the yellow and black helmet colour, a jet propelled getaway. Carter moves over Zellenfleck in the second place, but Muller is going for his life, and conditions obviously suit his style ideally. Seven heats gone in the world final. Here's the leaderboard. Billy Sanders unbeaten on six points. Kenny Carter on five. Hans Nielsen and Ollie Olsen, the Danes, on four. But keep an eye on the next three riders. Michael Lee, Egon Muller and Eric Gunderson all won their first ride and they all clash in heat number eight. So heat eight now growing in importance 
and Vitality because we've got Michael Lee, as you can see on the inside. This is Eric Gunderson coming into our picture. He'll be in yellow and black, the little Cradley Heath, number one now, one of the favourites for this title. He'll be on the outside. It really is a crucial one. There's Egon Muller. We'll see him. He was a flash in the pan first time out. Grid two, Chris Morton had a second place. Chris normally likes the big deep tracks so and this one is getting a bit deep and unpredictable on the inside Michael Lee once again the lineup Lee inside red next to him Morton grid three Muller on the outside Gunderson Lee and Gunderson are both impatient to get going off they go who's going to show it is Muller another tremendous start from the West German Lee comes around the curb Gunderson overshoots the corner but Egon Muller is in front and just look at him go has time to look back, Michael Lee is in second place, in third place it's now Chris Morton, but nobody's getting near Egon Muller, this 34 year old pop star playboy, former world long track champion from Kiel, in this, the first world final in West Germany, and well, the Rhineland fans are on their feet because they sent something very special. Muller streamlining down the back straight. It's a big track here, 396 metres, about the same length exact as Exeter in the National League. And Muller is in complete command. Michael Lee, we thought he had fast equipment set up by his dad, Andy Lee, but look at the distance. Muller just left him and has opened up the lead of a mile here in Heat 8. And this looks ominous for the English host. Muller playing to the gallery. Who is going to stop him? So Egon Muller joins Billy Sanders on the leaderboard in the front on maximum points. Tremendous start for you, Maximums. You're gating like a man inspired at the moment. Yeah, the, the trouble was, you know, somebody pushing the tapes and my clutch is getting very hot. And I should close a bit. And this moment the tape went up and so it was okay. I, I wasn't uh, first on the start, but my engine catch-up made us to the first bend. That was Michael Lee who was touching the tapes. That, that might be an important win for you there, Egon. Yeah, I think so. Billy Saunders, Heat 10 could decide this world title because you and Egon Muller, who meet in it, have got maximum points so far. So how conscious are you going to be about his sharp starting this afternoon? Well, I've won two races. Egon's won two races. It's going to be a very hard race. You know, I'm not going to give an inch, and I'm sure Egon won't give an inch. Heat number 10, is this going to be the most important race in World Speedway in 1983? The two unbeaten riders, Egon Muller, just there having a quick word with German official Gunter Sauber. He's in red on the inside. Sanders is next to him in blue. We'll have to keep a watch on Carl Mayer, the West German, in grid three. This is Muller, obviously our West German like friends, that's keeping that's their, that's their, that's their that's own boys. There is Mayer, could be a spoiler here. On the outside, it will be Lance King. So Billy Sanders from Australia, sandwiched between the two West Germans. And there is Muller. Looking just a little bit anxiously across there at Sanders. He knows the Australian is very quick from the traps, but he has the inside run. It's going to be so vital this start. Muller on the inside. Billy Sanders in grid two in blue. Then Mayer on the outside. Lance King, the two unbeaten riders in contention. Here we go. Up to the line. And Sanders has just got the top. Or has he? No. Oh, he rolled like a gentleman. He seemed to have the drop on Muller. Just did not quite have the legs. And the bike really ran away with Egon Muller up to the first corner. He now leads. Second place is Sanders. In third place, it is Meyer. But Egon Muller, it is in front again, looking completely comfortable and looking as though he can contain his chief rival. Sanders just has not got the horsepower to get near him. Well, here's Muller. Had a spell in the British League. 1973 with Hull, looked good, but has never shown any inclination at all to ride in Britain, I don't think so either actually, he can make a fortune on the continent, three times world long track champion, a pop star in his own right, with a nightclub act, in fact it's a drag act, certainly not dragging his heels here, what a lovely picture of Egon Muller, about to record his third win, and possibly the most important over Billy Sanders, this lad from Rooty Hill in Sydney, here's Muller, 
got a mile in front, they do space themselves out. He wins it. Second place is Sanders. Third is Carl Meyer. And the hunting horns of the Rhineland are signing. And already it looks as though it's going to take a good man to beat Egon Muller. Well, Bruce Pennell, what do you think of this track? It seems to be the first one out of the gate is winning every heat. It does. Not because it's slick, Gary. The complete opposite is because it's so grippy that if you get caught behind in the in the, the guy that's leading the race in its rooster tail, you just get filled in and it'll absolutely stop you. That's why it's becoming a Gators track, and it's so very fast. At the interval after 12 heats, there is the leading score. Egon Muller unbeaten on nine points. Billy Sanders and Kenny Carter on eight. Dennis Segalas on six. Hans Nielsen, two in there on six points. Eric Gunderson and Michael Lee, both with five. Join Dave Lanning. And so heat 13. And it's noticeable the track has been watered during the interval, which could change the top service condition. Oli Olsen on the inside. In the red helmet colour, Egon Muller, who's been out digging it up with a screwdriver, which uh, may be just a breach of regulations. He will be in grid two in blue, Phil Collins in white. From every vantage point, they're looking down, hoping for a triumph for Muller. He's in blue, unbeaten. Remember, Dennis Segalos is on the outside in yellow and black here. He has six points there. Siggy hasn't really been too happy. Olsen on the inside, the old dog at his 12th and last world final. Muller in grid two, hasn't missed a start yet. But it's interesting, Grid 2 has been the least successful yet. Away they go, Olsen has jumped out, Muller has missed the start. Segalos has gone up on the outside in yellow and black. Only Olsen leads it. Muller now sneaking into second place, but this could be the upset and the surprise. Only Olsen in front, doesn't normally make mistakes. And here comes Muller off. Oh, well, where did he come from? It looked as though Olsen had packed up. Muller came through and seemed to find a different gear. And from third to first, and nobody surely is going to get near Egon Muller. That machine is an Italian-built GM tuned by ace mechanical maestro in West Germany, Otto Lantenhammer. And it looks about 10 mile an hour quicker than anybody else here. It really is a flying machine. Muller completely in command, and Ole Olsen, this rider who has graced so many world finals, 12 in all just cannot get near him here's Muller and indeed uh, Olsen under a little bit of pressure back there from Phil Collins who's riding bravely and Egon Muller well surely nobody's going to get near him he went by Olsen as though the Great Dane had stood still Olsen in second place Muller wins it and uh, well all the conjecture that really is some motor that uh, Egon Muller has it's a flyer So Muller has won four races and surely nobody can stop him now. That was some race. What have you had in that engine? The way you accelerated there was tremendous. Don't talk always about the engine, that's me as well. Yeah. You know, the engine is quite good, you know, but... What about your You know, I was second and I... Passed Ollie in, in the second band because of a very bad mistake. It's not an engine. Well, you know, I mean, it's just making everybody look silly, isn't it? Well, I just asked him just now about what he got in the engine. He said it wasn't the engine, it was him. But uh, it, it did yeah. seem to go a bit quick there, didn't it? Well, I think Ollie also has got some, some of the fastest bikes in the world. And they passed Ollie as his chain fella. What, what would you say then, looking at it? What just, do keep, you... just keep the cameras on him. <laughs> Yeah. It's left you speechless, is it? Yeah, I don't know what to say, you know, what can I say? <laughs> Heat number 15 with three riders still in contention for a place on the rostrum. Eric Gunderson there has five points. Here we are on the inside. Mick Shearer, too, has five. Kenny Carter has only dropped one point in grid three in white. On the outside, Billy Sanders, he, too, has only dropped one point. Both to Egon Muller, but both of them were having an eye on a place in the frame. There is Eric Gunderson who had a zero second time out, which rather blotted his copybook. So Heat 15 will look for the outside grids. Carter in white, Sanders in yellow and black, and Gunderson, who normally starts pretty quickly on the inside. Carter again is in, impatient. He really must sit still. He could be caught going backwards. We've seen this twice in the past month. He doesn't make the start. Gunderson's gone away. In second place there, Shearer. 
Carter is back in third place, and Carter won't lie that he missed the start completely here. Comes Sanders and Sanders has been left, and here comes Kenny Carter around the outside, and well, he's just running out of grip, and the track there looked to be very, very sticky. Carter not at all happy with the track being watered, and it looks like his point has been proved there. Here is Eric Gunderson in front, going away from them. It is so easy to go quickly and gain ground when you're in front. At the back, there's a battle royal developing with Sanders and Carter knocking great lumps out of each other. Oh, I wish our West German friends would put their cameras back on the second place battle. This is Gunderson, remember, I'll have to go into a radio commentary on the second place. It is Carter on the outside, Sanders is now just nudging him out. Sanders has come through, Carter is in third place, this is Gunderson over the line. Sanders is second, Carter is third, Kenny Carter's chance surely has gone. And... Uh, there again is Gunderson, unaware of the drama going on behind him. A win for Eric Gunderson. Over the line, second, Sanders Carter getting filled in and dirty. He won't be happy about that. And that really was a dramatic race, and we didn't really perhaps see all the drama that was happening at the back. Egon Müller, superstar, it says, and we wonder if it's going to be Egon Müller, undisputed world champion after this, his last ride, heat 90. He only needs a second place. He's only got to be sensible here. He will be in grid two on the inside, Mitch Shearer. Next to him, Müller, grid three has hands Nielsen. And Nielsen needs points. Nielsen has nine. He could still get uh, onto the rostrum. On the outside, Antonin Kasper in yellow and black. Really out of contention. So Egon Müller, as the West German fans, there's around about, what, 35,000 of them here, all out in the open. There's not a stick of cover here. It's a good job it hasn't been raining. And there is Müller. Well, there's no rain on his parade. The sun has shone on him throughout the afternoon. It has gone exactly his way. The track looks to be prepared absolutely suitably to him. Müller here in blue, the 34-year-old, bidding to become West Germany's first ever World Speedway champion. He's won the Long Track Championship three times. He's just got to be sensible here, sit back. He just needs a second place as uh, the tapes go in A number 19. We look for Nelson. Nelson has gone away. Müller has made a disastrous start. And Müller's gone down the curve. And was his wheels over the line? It looks as though just his front wheel was over the inside curve there. They'll be talking about that one. But from our television evidence, as Nielsen goes clear, Müller just seemed to have his front wheel over the white line. And the regulations say that both wheels must be over the line to be any kind of reason for exclusion. So Müller really living dangerously there. But he should care. He's sitting back in second place. There's no danger to him. Hans Nielsen could get into the first three for Denmark if he just sits tight. The West German fans are beginning to celebrate already. Nielsen is stretching away, looking back over his shoulder. Müller is not going in for any theatricals. Here is Nielsen in front. And Nielsen stops. Oh, Nielsen looks as though I oh, could be throwing a chain. And the crowd rise because, well, what else can happen for Egon Müller? It truly is his day. A stroke of luck right at the end. He's going to get maximum points, and it was way back in 78 with Oli Olsen, we last saw a rider get a maximum in a world final. And here comes Egon Miller, and listen to the crowd. And the flag marshal's on his knees, he fell over Hans Nielsen. The flag marshal on his knees, but not this man, Egon Miller. He's up in the clouds, he is the world champion for West Germany. He's hardly put a wheel wrong. We knew this rider had the appetite, we knew he had the ability, we knew he had the skill, we knew he had the speed. Did he have the application to be World Speedway Champion? He has answered all our questions. It is yes, and they're overcome. That's his dancing partner. Egon, what's it like following this man as World Champion? Uh, he's, been champion he's been World Champion for the last yes, two years, now you're the World I Champion. I know, and I, you know, when I, when I became the second World Champion title at Wembley, and he was so happy, and I watching him, and said, oh... I should be once in my life that happy person. <laughs> and he was, ah, his eyes were, ah, <laughs> and my eyes as well today, because I can't believe in a moment. <laughs> I can't believe. What, the German supporters were so behind you today. Yeah. After your, your second ride, your confidence was so high, you just didn't miss a beat. You were great. Yeah, I think normally it makes me nervous, so many people. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I like to stay by myself. But once we have to say about this beautiful engine, it is an Italy one. Yes. 
Masoto, is, uh, he's a writer as well. Yes, he's, that's right. You know, and he spent his whole life to do this engine, and it is beautiful. Well, I'll tell you what, you proved it. You yeah. know, you're the best of the night. You're the new world champion. Congratulations again. Good Thanks. job. Well yeah. He'll give you the trophy in a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't have the trophy, though. <laughs> Well, he eventually got the trophy. Egon Muller, the first West German to win the world individual title. In second place, Australia's Billy Sanders. And the former world champion, Michael Lee, was third. But what a great pity that for the second year running, uh, the world champion will not be riding in the British League.